Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we are going to look at finding theoretical probabilities when we roll one or two dice and we observe either the number on top of one die or the sum of the two dice. First, we're going to look at just one die. What is the probability of getting an even number? So in order to do probabilities, we just need to review what could possibly happen when we roll one die. We might list the sample space. We could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And this first question is asking about even numbers. Well, the even numbers, that would be two, four, or six. So there are three successes, three favorable outcomes to even. So I'm gonna say P even. And then I would say three out of all possible outcomes, three out of six. As a fraction, I'm gonna simplify this to a half. I could write this as its equivalent decimal, 0.5, or I could write it as its equivalent percent, 50%. Next up, it asks, what is the probability of getting an odd number? So odd numbers, those are numbers that are not divisible by two, but they are integers. The probability of getting an odd number, so P of odd, there are three odd numbers out of the total six, that would be one half. So there is a 50% chance or 0.5 of rolling an odd number. What is the probability of getting an even or an odd number? Well, there are three even and there are three odd and there's no overlap because no number can be even or odd. So the number of successes or favorable outcomes would be six. And the total possible outcomes are six. Therefore, there is a 100% chance you will roll a number that is even, either even or odd on a regular six-sided die. Taking this up a notch, if you roll one die, what is the probability of getting a number greater than four? Listing that sample space one more time. Greater than four, so greater than four, the only possibilities are five and six. So P, the I'm gonna say roll is greater than four. There are two successes, two favorable outcomes out of our six. That would be one out of three, which is 0.3 repeating or we could say 33 and a third percent. What is the probability of getting a number that is not greater than four? Not greater than four, one is not greater than four, neither is two or three, four is not greater than four. The probability of something not greater than four, so we would say less than or equal to, right? That would be the same thing, not greater than, it's the same as less than or equal to. There were four successes out of the six outcomes, that would be two out of three, that's 0.667, or that's 66 and two thirds percent. And now it says, what must the probabilities in the two previous questions, so this one where it's greater than four or not greater than four, and the even or odd, because they both use the complement, right? The complement is all of the things in the sample space that are not favorable to that number, so not greater than four, the complement is less than or equal to four. And the probabilities of complements must add up to one. And we'll verify this from the previous example. The previous example we had three out of six were even and three out of six were odd. And that did add up to six out of six or 100%, which we actually saw. And then here we have two out of six are greater than four plus four out of six are not greater than four that adds up to six out of six, which is 100%. Um, so the probabilities must add up to 100% because they are in fact complements. Now separately, this one says, what is the probability of getting an even number or a number greater than four? There is a fancy property we can use, but we can also just count the possible outcomes. If a number is included in both of these events, we only count it once, it doesn't make it more likely. So the even numbers we said were two, four, and six, and the numbers greater than four were five and six, but we only count six one time because it's still just one of the outcomes. In purple, I have four, um, so probability of even or greater than four would be four out of six, which would be two out of three, which is 0.667. Nope, not percent, just 0.667, or we could say 66 and two thirds, 66.7%. If you want to apply the formula, when we have overlap in our events, we would say the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then what we would have to do is subtract 
the probability of both occurring because we need to get rid of the fact that we're counting something more than once. So we say P and B, and that would tell us the probability of A or B. So double checking this formula, the probability of an even number from the previous slide we said was three over six. The probability of a number greater than four was up here, it was two out of six. We're gonna subtract the probability of a number that's both even and greater than four, that would be the six, there's one in the overlap, one out of six, three plus two is five, that's supposed to be a plus sign, minus one gives us that four out of six, which agrees with if we just count. So if you can just count the possibilities, you can do that, or you can apply the formula, the probability of event A plus the probability of event B minus what they overlap, the probability of the overlap, and that would tell us that or situation. In the next few examples, we're gonna focus on rolling two six-sided dice. I put my adorable little table uh, from the previous video here, and we're gonna look at these questions. What is the probability of getting a sum that is divisible by two? Now, if we're gonna do probability, what we need to know is what is the denominator? How many possible outcomes are there? There are 36. So we have 36 outcomes, that's what we're looking at. That's all of the ordered pairs we see in blue. These questions look like they all deal with sums. I don't have the sums written out, but luckily the diagonals actually kind of tell us the sums. For example, if we look at this one and I highlight that, there's one possible way to get a sum of two, and it's convenient because it kind of lines up with my two on a die. And then we have two ways of getting a three. Okay, so I color coded it. The purple was a little dark, so I only used it once. Uh, and then, of course, when we ran out of numbers that show on dice, they, they don't work, my diagonals don't work, so I just added seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, and 12. Okay, the probability of getting a sum that is divisible by two and we could show how we know, we can circle them, we can add them up, so divisible by two, that would be two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. There's one way to get a two. Uh, to get a four, there are three ways. To get a six, there are one, two, three, four, five ways. To get an eight, there are also five ways. A 10, there are three ways, and a 12, there is one way. If we add these all up, that's one plus three plus five is nine. And then one plus three plus five again would also be nine, and that gives us a total of 18. The probability would be 18 favorable outcomes over all possible outcomes, 36. It looks like there's a 50% chance. So I could show how I know I showed my work here. You know, if I didn't highlight, I could circle everything, whatever makes sense for you and how you wanna show the work, but it's 50% chance that it will be divisible by two. Next up, what is the probability of getting a sum greater than eight? So greater than eight, that would be sums of nine, 10, 11, and 12. And if we look at this adorable table, we have one, 12, two, 11, three, 10, and four, nine. And if I add up those values, I get 10. So there's 10 possible ways that the sum will be greater than eight. I would put 10 over 36. I'm gonna simplify. That gives me five over 18, which is approximately 0.278. What is the probability of getting a number divisible by two or greater than eight? So this is the one where we can do it two different ways. We could do the formula from the previous slide or we can just count whichever way makes the most sense to you. I'll, I'll do both, I'll show both. Um, so divisible by two, we know that there were 18 ways, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add on, this one we knew there was already 18 favorable outcomes. Now what I wanna look for are the sums that are greater than eight, but not even. Because I've already included all of the even sums, I'm only gonna look at sums of nine and 11. Because I know that the sums of 10 and 12 are already included. Um, 11, there are two ways and nine there were four ways. So I'm gonna add two plus four plus 18, that's 20, 24 out of 36. I'm gonna simplify this, we can divide them by 12, we get two out of three, which is 0. 0.667, or 66 and two thirds, uh, yeah, 66 and two thirds percent. If we use the 
the formula from the previous slide, remember that one was probability of A plus probability of B minus we subtract away the probability of A and B and that will tell us the probability of the OR. Probability of A we said was 18 out of 36. Probability of B we calculated here to be 10 out of 36. But now what are we going to subtract out of this? We need to subtract out the, div the numbers divisible by 2 that are also bigger than 8. That would be 10, 1, 2, 3 ways to get 10 and 1 way to get 12. That's a total of 4 ways. Minus 4 over 36. 18 plus 10 is 28. Minus 4 gives me 24 out of 36. So either way, again, whichever way makes more sense to you, we end up with that 24 out of 36, the 2 thirds. Lastly, what is the probability of not rolling a 6? Uh, for this, I probably want to look at the complement, right? Because that's going to be a lot of things to have to add up. Or I could just say, wait, how many ways could I get a 6? And then let's subtract that from 36. We're going to use that complement for the win here. So 6, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Probability of a 6 is 5 out of 36. So the probability of, I'm going to say 6 not would be, well, the rest of the 36, 31 out of 36. I can't simplify that. I can not convert it to a decimal, though. 31 out of 36 is like 0.861. So it's more likely than not, you're not going to roll a 6, but the way we found that was by using the 6 itself. Because I have that table, you could, of course, just count all of those rows, or the diagonals, except for the blue diagonal, the long blue diagonal. Um, but it's really up to you, right? Whatever makes the most sense, that's what you should stick with. These have been questions about theoretical probabilities when we roll one or two dice. Thank you for stopping by.